Hello everyone. For those of you who don't recognize my voice, this is Vishnene. I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the Vaccine Biosciences program. We focus on developing vaccine-based solutions for the control of infectious diseases of livestock. So why does Ildri need this program? Well, it is recognized that livestock diseases, which fall into various different categories as listed here, feature prominently amongst the various constraints faced by smallholder farmers and pastoralists. Therefore, within the ILRI strategy, our program primarily contributes to increasing livestock productivity, but there are also other implications, such as assets, income, and nutrition. Now, vaccines are inventions and are highly effective disease interventions. We work on improving existing vaccines and learning from them to produce more optimal ones. Our program priority diseases are East Coast fever and contagious bovine pleuropneumonia, but we also contribute to research on other livestock diseases, such as Rifali fever, African swine fever, and we also have a general interest in ticks as vectors of disease and the role of wildlife as reservoirs of disease. So Lucilla will later on talk about more about our ECF work, and JJ will present on CBPP and other mycoplasmas. The products that we are developing are important not only in protecting individual animals, but they also contribute to the concept of herd immunity. As diagnostics play a key role in disease control, our group is also involved in improving and simplifying such tests. Now, success for us would be development of vaccines and diagnostic products as inputs to improve disease control. So we contribute to varying degrees uh, of work on these five diseases. We employ generic technologies that can cut across diseases to answer questions in basic and applied research with the objectives of developing vaccines and diagnostic tools as inputs to improve in disease control. So as an example, the vaccine formulation technology refers to comparing and identifying optimal methods for inducing immunity to disease. Now we work in various consortia for research and product development, and our capacity development is primarily through students. So this slide here outlines in greater details the type of activities we undertake in our basic and applied research with feed into each other, and we can discuss the activities listed under here in more detail during question time. Vaccine research is high reward, but high risk and long-term in nature. This creates a challenge as most funders are looking for products in the short to medium term and getting buy-in for this program is not trivial. Now as a group, we have gelled very well over the last few years and there are several proud moments for me. For example, when our publications get accepted into high impact journals and when conference abstracts get chosen for oral presentations. However, a highlight was when we were successful in getting National Science Foundation support for our ECF and CBPP research, and we have subsequently got a created no-cost extension for CBPP. This recognition of our science has led to additional opportunities. What we have not done too well is to communicate or contribute to other program activities, and hopefully the more regular program leader meetings that are now being convened among other in initiatives will help to improve this. A dream alliance for us would be to have a fully integrated platform along the vaccine R4D pathway as outlined in this uh, rather simplified flow diagram. Our program advantage is in demonstrating proof of principle, but we have many gaps in this diagram starting from market assessment. For example, we still don't have good impact assessment studies for our priority diseases or metrics that would justify us moving to undertake new diseases in our research portfolio. As you can see, complex partnerships are needed in this pathway, which transition from mainly public funded activities at the start to mainly private sector funding at the end. The advent of PPPs or public-private partnerships and the recent swing in the mood of funders back to science helps, but this whole field remains a complex landscape and presents many challenges. So I hope that this presentation sets the scene for the Vaccine Biosciences Group. We look forward to more in-depth questions and discussions on this topic and the issues that we have presented. Thanks for your attention and don't forget you can replay this as many times as you like.